This is how you create a moody, monochromatic look in DaVinci Resolve. My name is George and I'm a nomadic creative who works in DaVinci Resolve a lot. So alongside my other content like travel and art videos that I'll be sharing with you, I want to share the knowledge that I've gained over years of color grading videos. First, I'm going to break down this note tree that we'll be using to create this look. So to start with, I've added a serial node to add some sharpness at the end of the look to create some pop and give it some clarity. After that, I'm going to add a node for some glow. I'm going to show you a way to add some glow that will really add some nice moody contrast and depth to your image. After that, we've got an exposure node, and then we have the look node where the main effect for this look will be applied. After the look node, we have a look adjustment node where I'm going to show you how to add some more contrast with some split toning. We have a parallel node to add some saturation to the overall effect, and a fade node after that to add that pseudo film-like fade you see a lot. And lastly, we have a global node just to add some finishing touches if we'd like. As you should always do with every grade, we're going to first pick our hero shot. This shot is already in Rec. 709 and is color corrected, so we're not going to worry about adjusting primaries. Let's start by adjusting the contrast. We are going for a moody tone to this, so we're going to underexpose a bit. I'm going to bring my gamma down and compress the shadows a little, but I'm going to the gain wheel to lift everything up a bit. I'm going to leave it around 890 IRE to add to the low light nature of this effect, as well as fake some dynamic range. Now let's create this clean black effect, which is actually very simple. Go into the hue versus sat curve and up in your preview window, you want to click and drag the eyedropper across the skin tones of your subject. This will give us the range in our hue versus saturation curves where our skin tones are sitting and it will make sure that they don't get affected. Now we can adjust these points to make sure we are desaturating everything else except our skin tones. Anything else in your shot that is around this color will also keep its saturation, which will add to this effect. If some parts of your skin get desaturated and it doesn't look good, you can expand these points out a little to bring back any lost color. So we've desaturated almost everything and you would think that there's almost no way to add some color into this without making it really obvious. But I'm going to show you how we can add some color back into the shot in a very subtle way, which will be subconsciously picked up by the human eye and make your shot look like it has more contrast. After selecting the look adjustment node, Go to the lift wheel and let's push it in the opposite direction of the color that we have in the shot. In this case, we have orange hues, so we're going to push slightly towards the cyan blue hue. You don't want too much, just a little will do. After that, go into the shadow lock wheel and push in the opposite direction of the lift, so we're going to push back towards orange to counteract the blue we added. This will clean up the darkest parts of the shot, making them black again, and we'll leave that cyan blue tone in the middle shadow areas. If we toggle the node on and off, we can see that we are indeed cooling down the image a bit, but the image doesn't look blue. If you give your eye a minute away from the screen and come back to it, you won't be able to notice it, but your eye is indeed picking up that color contrast you've just added into the shot. This is a great way to hide some color and create color contrast in your image and create better looks, not just with this effect, but any of your color grades. In the saturation node here, let's add some saturation with the color boost to add some pop to the skin tones. I'm going to go too far and then dial it back. I'm just keeping an eye on the subject's skin as I move the control back and forth finding a sweet spot. Let's add some glow and create a nice bloom effect, dragging the glow effects into the glow node. Set the composite type to soft light and drag the shine threshold all the way down. These are actually some great settings for a good general glow which you can then adjust using the global blend but I want to show you how you can adjust it a bit more to create some more depth and moodiness. Go to the spread control and drag it to the left until you notice the glow start to wrap more around the edges in your shot. Let's also turn the saturation down all the way so it doesn't affect our colors. I'm liking this but it's too much so let's take the global blend, turn it all the way down and then gradually increase it until it's giving us something subtle but still effective. The glow brightened up my shot a little too much, so I'll go back into the exposure node and turn down the gain to bring down the highlights a little bit. Now here's how we're going to add some sharpness and pop into the image. Let's zoom into our subject space since we mostly care about how all these adjustments are affecting our subject. Let's go to the primaries panel and turn up the midtone detail, and this will give us some contrast in the midtones of our shot which will create this fake sharpening effect. Now let's add a simple fade effect so the shadows get lifted up a bit while still keeping some contrast in them. 
Select the fade node and go to your curves panel. Select these three dots here and select add default anchors. Now grab this lowest point here and bring it up a bit. Hold down the option key and select the second point here and drag down until you get some darkness back in the shadows. You can adjust these two points to your liking. Just be careful once this point gets lower than this point as it can start to create a weird inverted effect in your shadows. I'm pretty happy with the look but let's add some overall contrast in the global node to tie everything together. That's how you create this monochrome, moody color grade in DaVinci Resolve. This kind of effect looks great on shots with human subjects in them in a nature setting with lots of green or in an urban setting. But you can try this effect with any shot and you might be surprised and get a result that you like. If you enjoyed this tutorial, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you for watching.